after the owner had gone to sleep at the house at the, by the barn, Anastasia looked around the pasture to which it was lit up by pasture lights all around, so she wasn't surrounded in the darkness. Anastasia figured that if she could jump over the fence or find a way out of the pasture, she would gallop as far as she could to get away from the barn. She found a broken fence to which it was caused by a horse that crashed into the fence, so she figured that maybe she could jump over the fence in order to escape. While looking around, she saw that everywhere she looked was in pitch blackness, only being illuminated by the moonlight outside. She then saw the field with the forest behind it. She wondered what or who could be lurking in the forest. She had nightmares of being chased by predators in the forest that night, so she wondered if there were other horses in the wild that she could fit in with. Anastasia suddenly saw a white horse emerge from the forest, staring at her what seemed to know the situation Anastasia was in so he galloped towards the fence. Once the white horse got closer to Anastasia, he looked at the broken fence and back to Anastasia. It seemed that Anastasia, that what the white horse wanted her to do was to get out of the pasture. But what did the horse want it? Anastasia wasn't so sure, so she galloped as far as she could from the broken fence as fast as she could. She had to pick up the galloping start in order to make the jump over the broken fence. Anastasia got far enough when she picked up a fast gallop, and when she got closer to the fence, she jumped over the broken part of the fence, which she had been made over without getting herself injured in the process. Then she looked up at the white horse. He seemed impressed by that, so he ended up galloping towards the forest. Anastasia followed him, as if she wondered where he was going. Wait! Stop! I don't know who you are! Anastasia called out as she ran after the white horse. However, when she was inside the forest, the white horse disappeared. Anastasia kept running through the forest for a few minutes, only to find the white horse not to find him. However, she was lost. Everywhere she looked, Anastasia hoped that she would find her way out of the forest. But she couldn't find her way out of the forest since it had been dark. Dark out in the night. Predators were out hunting and Anastasia did not want to run into any predators while hunting for food. She looked around, and the only light was from the glow of the moon. She looked to find a cave, which was unoccupied, so she headed in that direction. When Anastasia approached the cave, she headed inside and lay down inside the cave to hide herself from the predators outside of the weather outside. She was having a hard time trying to fall asleep. It was due to her tossing and turning a bit. She wished that she was lying down on hay or grass, but with the predators hunting outside, outside of the cave was of the forest, it wasn't an option for her. It was only a few minutes later, when Anastasia fell asleep, hoping that the next day would be smooth now that she ran away. The next morning, Anastasia woke up to see that she, there was a white horse standing next to the cave. It confused her as to how she man he managed to find her in the cave. Anastasia stood up, walked out of the cave, and then stared at the white horse's eyes. You're awake, the white horse said. He was a Mustang, and he seemed to be a very kind one. I was looking for you last night, but you disappeared into the forest, Anastasia began to explain. I was trying to find you in the forest on night, only that I lost you, and I had to hide from predators. Very clever of you hiding in that cave, or you would have been food for coyotes or wolves. The white horse replied, I have a herd that where I live in, and we're a largely, fairly large herd. We always look out for each other. You so you're not alone? Anastasia asked. The white horse replied with shaking his head. We always protect each other and look out for one another. I could take you to the herd. The white horse said, That is a nice offer, although I'm trying to get back home to my owner. Anastasia replied, "'Who's your owner?' the white horse asked. "'Emily. She was my favorite owner. "'She was the one that raised me since I was a foal. "'I was trained by her until I had to be sold "'since she no longer had room left for me "'due to more horses coming in,' Anastasia explained. "'She must have really loved you so much to care for you. "'Not a lot of people are like that with animals,' the white horse said, "'as he and Anastasia started to walk to find their way out of the forest.' Say, I didn't get your name. What is your name? Anastasia asked. My name goes by Richard. How about yours? Richard asked. 
name's Anastasia. I said that you were in the pasture with other place I saw it was at. The place was a fine for start. The owner was nice, until I was written by a barn brat girl named Haley, Anastasia stated. She also explained on how Haley would abuse horses with riding crops. Unfortunately for Anastasia, she was a victim to that kind of beating from Haley. That must have been rough. So, is that why you decided to run away? Richard asked. Yes, it is, Anastasia replied. She knew deep down that Emily would never, in any way, shape, or form, go as far as hurting her if she didn't do what Emily wanted her to do. Sure, Emily would get frustrated every now and then, but she and Anastasia would keep trying until they get their task done right, even if it took so many tries. Richard and Anastasia walked out of the forest to find themselves on a hill. Down the hill lay a large meadow that was filled with horses. Most of the horses were Mustangs, and while some of the other breeds beside Mustangs, but to Anastasia, horses were horses to her. The two horses headed down there to see a black stallion who approached the horses. He seemed to be the leader of the herd, and he had a star on his forehead and a snip at the muzzle. Anastasia wasn't so sure if the herd was going to be kind or not, but when the horse, two horses got closer, the stallion approached them. Since the white horse brought Anastasia towards the herd, he wanted to make sure that Anastasia wasn't a threat to him or his herd. The horses soon took their attention to their leader. Some of the horses approached their leader, who was staring at the two horses. Richard, who is this that you brought? The black stallion asked. Sir, this is a paint horse mare. She ran away from another barn and is trying to find her way home, Richard explained. What do you mean her home? Was she, was she at a barn before coming here? The black stallion snorted a bit. He was harsh, but was only doing this to protect his herd. Yes, I was, until I was a victim of being abused by a barn brat. That is why I ran away. I'm trying to find my way back to my owner, Emily, Anastasia explained. The stallion understood her story, but he wouldn't know what it was like being in the barn since he was a wild horse throughout his life. The name's Strider, the leader of this herd I am, Strider said. So that was the name of the black Mustang stallion. Father, is everything? A buckskin colored stallion approached his father. He had a star on his forehead and he too was aware of the commotion that was going on. It's all right, Dandelion. I am handling this, Strider spoke softly harsh to his son. An easy up on Anastasia Strider. She could stay in the herd until we find our way back home, Dandelion suggested, seeing as his father was hesitant on her joining the herd. Yeah, I'm okay with that since I never had any friends, Anastasia said, supporting the buckskin Mustang's decision. All right, you can stay in the herd as long as you obey like what I say and what the rest of my herd does, Strider said, to which Anastasia nodded in agreement. With Anastasia headed for the rest of the horses in the herd, she passed by a few horses. Most of them were surprised by Anastasia's heroic efforts to escape from the barn that had, had an abusive barn brat. By the time Anastasia trotted towards it by a nearby apple tree, she then laid down under the shade while looking at the fresh apples that grow on the tree. trees. Danny Lyon was walking towards Anastasia. He too wanted to give her a warm welcome to the herd himself. Sure, his father was harsh with the welcome, but he was just trying to protect the herd, to which Anastasia could understand that. I want to apologize about my father. He can be harsh sometimes, Dandelion said, catching Anastasia's attention. He was He's like that with new arrivals of horses that we never seen before. I headed over to see what was going on. You're Anastasia, right? Yes, my name is Anastasia, Anastasia said as she stood up to eat an apple from a branch and where a couple of fresh apples stood, waiting to be eaten. You surely were hungry. Well, it's nice to meet you, Anastasia, Dandelion said. As Anastasia munched on some apples, she was sure hungry. Thanks to your name, and my name's, your name's Dandelion, son of Strider, yes? Anastasia asked, to which the buckskin adult, adult horse nodded. Yep, my mom's name is Mitzi. She's that Palmino horse over there, and Dandelion said, 
pointing his nose to the left. Anastasia saw Mitzi grazing on the grass with some of the other horses in the herd. She seems like a nice mother, Anastasia said. She sure is. She is a very kind mother, though, Dandelion replied. How long have you been in since birth? Anastasia asked. I'm about nine years old. I've been in the herd since the day I was born, Dandelion answered. My dad isn't as bad as you may seem once you get to know who he is, but he's very protective and kind, though, Dandelion reassured Anastasia, to which the mare smiled. She knew that he would eventually warm up to her. Dandelion and Anastasia were talking about their lives before they met. That was when Anastasia talked about her life with her owner Emily before she was sold to another barn. Dandelion had a feeling that Emily was a nice person and then hoped that Anastasia would one day find her way back to Emily. What he really liked about the new mare was that she was a smart one and as always willing to do anything. Strider and Mitzi watched her son talking to Anastasia about a few feet away from them. The horses seemed to get along well. Mitzi was proud of her son for making friends with the new mare, although Strider was wary about what kind of mare Anastasia will be with her in the herd. This is something nice seeing our son making new friends with the mare, Mitzi commented, catching Strider's attention. I see that he's getting along with her, but I'm very wary that she what she'll be like, Strider replied. I could tell you that she you just think that she will betray us, but I don't see that in this mare. She isn't the one to backstab anyone, Mitzi said. No offense, Mitzi, but I'll believe that when I see it, Strider replied. You think I'm lying? Mitzi scoffed. She just couldn't believe what just came out of her the stallion's mouth. No, I didn't say that. I just don't know her. Oh, we So we just can't let her guard down, Strider answered. The rest of the day was calm and Anastasia got to meet some of the horses in Strider's herd during that day to meet them. Most of the horses were chill with Anastasia and they were even surprised by Anastasia's smart and clever nature and even been through a lot when she sold him to Emily, her to Emily. But of course there was a few yearlings in the herd and they seemed to take interest in making friends with Anastasia. They didn't try to pick on her or fight her unlike the colts that harassed her back when she was younger in Emily's farm. In fact, the foals were more curious about Anastasia. The said judge was said with the yearlings. Dandelion was also keeping a close eye on her, only making sure she was getting along with the other horses well. Despite him being the son of Mitzi and Strider, he was next in line to lead the herd once Strider passed on. Night had fallen in the meadows where the herd stayed. Anastasia was lying down by the apple tree, as she liked that spot. A few horses were nearby the apple tree sleeping. However, Dandelion decided to keep to sleep next to the new mare. Anastasia didn't mind Dandelion sleep next to her, as she appreciated his company and that Dandelion really liked her. The night's sleep went very well since Anastasia was around the horses. However, she didn't have time to toss and turn or had to do that, or sleep next to the next the night before, but she did have a good night's sleep after that night. The next morning the horses were grazing on the grass, when they were all eating the fresh grass as they loved to eat. After grazing on the grass, most of the horses were drinking by the stream, not far from the water, near the meadow. Anastasia saw Mitzi was nearby, and as she was kind and not as harsh as Strider, but she was Dandelion's mother as well. Hello, Anastasia. That's your name, right? Mitzi asked. Oh, yeah. Anastasia's my name, Mitzi. Mitzi. Anastasia said, with leading the, answering the lead mare's question. I hope you feel welcome here, Mitzi said. I do, although this lead stallion was a tad bit harsh with me, Anastasia answered. Oh, don't worry about Strider. He's just worried about his herd letting newcomers in join our herd. Mitzi said, brushing off what the lead stallion said about Anastasia earlier when she first joined. I'm sure he's just trying to protect his herd, and that I can understand, Anastasia said, to which Mitzi could understand that. The morning went well with her horses doing their own thing. Danny Lyon started to hang around Anastasia, and the two of them were starting to get along very well. Seeing that this made Strider slowly warm up to Anastasia, he looked up on the hill to see a man on a horse. 
He seemed to be suspicious and bad news. Strider glanced at the other horses, including Anastasia, warned them that the man was on a hill in the distance. After he stated this warning, it meant that the horses had to move in order to stay together as a herd. Anastasia didn't understand why that man was thinking about capturing horses from the herd, but she was told by Mitzi that men capture wild horses and sometimes treat them poorly when it comes to taming them. Anastasia hated to be one of those horses captured and poorly treated by those men, so she would have to follow the horses. However, Strider suggested that the horses leave at night, so they wouldn't be jumped by the next morning. Mitzi questioned Strider why not leave sooner. However, Strider knew that that man would come to the, on the horses, capture the wild ones the next day, and it was the day after they found out where they were, it would give them some time to get away from danger sooner or later. Anastasia agreed to go with the herd to get away from the bad people, so it was, was she felt like she was safe with the rest of the horses. Until it was the afternoon, Anastasia walked over to a Carrie Bog pony. She was the oldest of the mares in the herd, 27 to be exact. Her name was Rebecca, and from what Dandelion and Strider call her, she had been in the herd for 17 years, a lot young, longer than Anastasia, so she knew how Strider was. He is just doing what he can to protect us. He'll warm up to you at some point, Rebecca said to the paint horse. I could tell he's protective, but I'm sure he'll like me eventually, Anastasia replied. Mitzi is a good mate to him and a mother of Dandelion. I could see how Dandelion's next in line to be the lead stallion. However, Strider wants what's best for him and what's best for the herd, Rebecca explained. Anastasia explained who Emily was and that she had plans to return to Emily. Sure, her journey was going to be a challenge, but Anastasia knew that she wouldn't stop until she found and found Emily. It was the late afternoon when things took a drastic turn. Anastasia was grazing on some grass until she heard rumbling sound. The paint horse mare looked up at the hill of the distance. She could see at least 20 men on horses, and they were about 50 feet or so away. Strider looked up to see the men on the horses with ropes. They had planned to capture as many horses as they could, but sensing the danger, he neighed loudly to get everyone their attention. And of course, all the horses saw the men on their horses leading towards them. This meant that everyone had to run as fast as they could so they could outrun the men on their horses.